Several times a week, I need an extra set of hands and I reach for some C-clamps. We have a bunch of different brands to test today, so let's see which brand is the best. In the first test, we'll compare the maximum clamping force for each of the C-clamps. Only one C-clamp survives the final test without damage. At a price of $25.50 for six C-clamps or $4.25 each is this ShopTech brand. The advertised capacity for each of the C-clamps is six inches. The ShopTech has a cast ductile iron frame. The actual capacity is only five and five eighths inches. Throw capacity makes a difference on being able to reach and then apply force on the right part of the workpiece. And the shop tech just doesn't offer too much reach at only 2.25 inches. When trying to clamp two objects together, an adjusting screw with lots of slop can cause a workpiece to move out of position. And the shop tech has 0.095 inches of movement. The shop tech is made in China. The shop tech weighs 1.89 pounds. The handle length, thread pitch, and build quality vary significantly. Some of the C-clamps are really light duty. To standardize the amount of handle force applied to each C-clamp, I put together this attachment which will allow torque to be applied to each vice handle equally. I've got a click style torque wrench that I'll go ahead and set to only 50 inch pounds and I'll then use it for testing each of the C-clamps. The ShopTech's adjustment screw is pretty gritty and not at all smooth. With 50 inch pounds of torque on the handle, the ShopTech is finished at 396 pounds of clamping force. At a price of $6, the second least expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Pittsburgh and sold at Harbor Freight. The Pittsburgh claims to be an industrial C-clamp that is made of heavy-duty cast iron. The Pittsburgh is made in China. The jaw opening on the Pittsburgh is 6 and 7 16 inches. And the Pittsburgh has a half inch more throat than the ShopTech at 2.75 inches. And 0.12 inches of adjustment screw movement is a little worse than the ShopTech. 2.44 pounds for the Pittsburgh. And fortunately, the Pittsburgh is a lot smoother than the ShopTech. 644 pounds of clamping force is very close to 250 pounds more than the ShopTech. At a price of $12 is this Wynn brand, manufactured from heavy-duty malleable cast iron. The Wynn is made in China. Just like the Pittsburgh, the Wynn has a 6 and 7 16 inch jaw opening. Just like the Pittsburgh, the Wynn also has 2.75 inches of throat. And 0.187 inches is the most slop yet. And the Wynn weighs 2.85 pounds. And the adjustment screw is a lot smoother than the Pittsburgh and the ShopTech, and it really makes a huge difference. 1,058 pounds is almost twice as much as the Pittsburgh. At a price of $14 is this Irwin brand. Larger swivel pad reduces barring on work surface. The Irwin is made in India. The Irwin's the heaviest yet at 3.73 pounds. The jaw opening on the Irwin is 6 and 7 eighths inches. And the Irwin offers the most throat yet at 3.5 inches. And the adjustment screw has the least amount of slop yet at only 0.06 inches. And the Irwin made it to 1,005 pounds of clamping force to move into second place behind the win. Also the price of $14, the same price as the Irwin, is this Harden brand. Thicker screw for more secure clamp and durability. The Harden is made in China. 2.55 pounds for the Harden. The jaw opening on the Harden is very close to six and a quarter inches. At 2.75 inches, the Harden is the same as the Pittsburgh and the win. 0.14 inches of slop is about the same as the Pittsburgh. And the Harden is finished at 638 pounds, which is very close to the same as the Pittsburgh. At a price of $15 is this Pony brand. It claims to offer 1,000 pounds of clamping pressure. Ductile iron clamp casting. The jaw opening on the Pony is very close to 6.5 inches. The Pony is made in China. And the Pony's throat is the same as the Irwin at 3.5 inches. 0.118 inches is about the same as the Pittsburgh and the Harden. The Pony's pretty light at 2.31 pounds. And the Pony's adjustment screw isn't nearly as smooth as the Win and the Irwin. And the Pony came to a stop at 651 pounds, which is a little bit better than the Pittsburgh. At a price of $17 is this Performance Tool brand. Unlike the previous brands, this one has a quick release feature. The performance tool is made in China. Malleable iron construction. The jaw opening on the performance tool is very close to six and a half inches. And the performance tool is right at 2.5 inches. The performance tool weighs 2.63 pounds. And the performance tool clamp has a lot more slop at 0.332 inches or about twice as much slop as any of the other brands. And the performance tools adjustment screw is very gritty and only made it to 282 pounds to take the last position from the shop tech. At a price of $22 is this Lincoln Electric brand. Includes a heavy duty drop Ford steel frame. Lincoln Electric is made in China. The Lincoln Electric weighs 2.35 pounds. The jaw opening is very close to 6 inches. And the Lincoln Electric is at 2.75 inches of throat. And it has quite a bit of slop at 0.194 inches. And the Lincoln Electric moves into third place behind the Irwin at 770 pounds. At a price of $27 is this Yoast brand. The Yoast is a drop forward steel C-clamp. The load force rating on the Yoast is 5,400 pounds. The jaw opening on the Yoast is very close to 6 and a quarter inches. The Yoast C-clamp is made in China. And the Yoast is a heaviest yet are just over 5 pounds. And 4.25 inches is the deepest throat yet. And 0.035 inches is the least amount of slop yet. And the Yoast has a much longer handle than average, but it also has very coarse threads. And the coarse threads really held back the Yoast, only making it to 616 pounds. At a price of $28 is this Gros brand. There's no information on the packaging regarding where the Gros brand is made. The frame is rated for 1,400 pounds. Made of 60,000 PSI ductile iron. And a Gros weighs very close to 3 pounds. The jaw opening is just under 6 inches. And the 
grows is very close to three inches. 0.074 inches is better than most of the other brands. And DeGrose takes the lead from the win at 1,070 pounds of force. At a price of $35 is this Bessie brand. The frame is made of ductile cast iron. It claims it can deliver 2,450 pounds of clamping force. The Bessie is made in China. The jaw opening is close to six and a quarter inches. The Bessie has a throat of 2.75 inches. 0.24 inches is quite a bit of slop. The Bessie C-clamp weighs 2.79 pounds. And the Bessie ran out of steam at 856 pounds or about 214 pounds less than the Grows. At a price of $36 is this Kanka brand. It's cast and heat treated for maximum strength. It has a clamping force rating of 3,300 pounds. 3.88 pounds for the Kanka. There's no information on the packaging regarding where the Kanka is manufactured. The jaw opening on the Kanka is right at 6 inches. 2.75 inches for the Kanka. 0.0215 inches of slop is the best yet. And the Kanka performed about the same as the Yoast at 616 pounds. At a price of $52 is this Bessie F-Style clamp. Unlike the C-clamp, the lower jaw on the F-clamp can be moved up and down. There's a notch in the main frame to keep the lower jaw from detaching. The Bessie F-Style clamp is made in Germany. And the Bessie F-Style clamp is very light at only 2.32 pounds. The maximum jaw opening is very close to 7 inches. And the Bessie has the deepest throat yet at 4.6 inches. It's also better than average at 0.055 inches. And the F-Style clamp just fell short of 600 pounds. At a price of $55 is this Crescent brand. The Crescent is made of drop forged steel. The swivel pad completely encircles the ball joint providing a permanent attachment. Extra large anvil provides a greater gripping area. The Crescent is made in USA. The Crescent weighs 4.59 pounds. The jaw opening is very close to 6.5 inches. And the Crescent's throat is very close to 4.5 0.2 inches, 0.112 inches of slop, and the coarse threads really held back the crescent. However, 831 pounds is about 200 pounds better than average. At a price of $60 is this Proto brand, constructed of forged steel. The forcing screw has heavily rolled Acme thread allowing the screw to turn easily under pressure. The jaw opening is very close to 6 inches. Just like the Crescent, the Stanley Proto has a throat that's very close to 4.2 inches. And the Stanley Proto moves into second place at 0.024 inches. The Proto is made in USA. And the Proto weighs 5.14 pounds. And the Proto only made it to 673 pounds or just a little bit better than average. The coarse threads really held back the Proto. At a price of $73 is this Wright brand. The Wright C-clamp is rated for 6,900 pounds. The jaw opening on the right is just over 6 inches. The Wright clamp is made in USA. And the Wright weighs 4.97 pounds. And the Wright tool is very close to 4.2 inches. 0.073 inches of adjustment screw wobble is about the same as the Grows. And the Wright tool looks a lot like the Stanley Proto and it performed like it too at 667 pounds of force. We'll be testing two different C-clamps made by Wilton. The first one cost $75. Rated for 6,600 pounds of clamping Force, constructed of drop forged steel. The Wilton is made in China. The Wilton weighs 5.59 pounds. The jaw opening on the Wilton is close to six and a quarter inches. And the Wilton has the second deepest throat yet at 4.25 inches. 0.067 inches of adjustment screw slop is quite a bit better than average. Even though the Wilton has much more coarse threads than most of the other brands, it still performed well at 747 pounds. At a price of $252, the most expensive C-clamp we'll be testing is made by Wilton. Constructed of drop forged steel, designed for heavy duty construction, bridge building, heavy fabrication, and ship building. Square head spindle has large diameter rolled thread and hardened point. The Wilton is made in Taiwan. The jaw opening on the Wilton is very close to six and a half inches. And the heavy duty Wilton has a throw to 3.5 inches. And there's very little slop at only 0.0385 inches. 18.77 pounds for the Wilton. I'll use a ratchet and socket since the Wilton doesn't have a handle. And the Wilton made it to 1,039 pounds before the torque wrench click ended the test. When applying an equal amount of leverage to all the C-clamps, the Gross came out on top at 1,070 pounds of clamping force. The very affordable win finished in second at 1,058, Wilton 1,039, and Irwin 1,005 pounds. Tool weight might be an indicator of tool build quality and durability, and the heavy-duty Wilton weighs more than three times as much as the other brands at 18.77 pounds. The Wilton stands Stanley Proto, Yoast, and Wright tools all weigh very close to 5 pounds. Adjustment screw slop is an indicator of build quality, and the Kanka has the least amount of slop at only 0.0215 inches. Stanley Proto, 0.024 inches, Yoast, 0.035, and the Heavy Duty Wilton, 0.0385 inches. A stuck or stub and swivel head causes the workpiece or clamp to move around quite a bit when trying to tighten the C-clamp. To test the build quality of the swivel heads, I'll place this ball transfer unit under the flat iron so it'll rotate freely. I'll then apply 500 pounds of clamping force on the swivel head. And the shop tech swivel head is stuck and the swivel head is slipping on the metal at 56 inch pounds at 2.5 inches from the fulcrum. Unfortunately, the swivel head is just too flat to grip with locking pliers. With a 500 pound load applied, the Pittsburgh swivel head takes quite a
quite a bit of force to rotate at 45 inch pounds at two and a half inches from the fulcrum. For a budget C-clamp, the Wins ball and socket actually performed fairly well with a 500 pound load. 23 inch pounds at 2.5 inches from the fulcrum is about half the force as the Pittsburgh. And the Irwin performed even better than the Win, moving very easily at only 11 inch pounds. And the Harden looks a lot like the Pittsburgh and it performed like it too at 48 inch pounds or over four times more than the Irwin. Unfortunately, the swivel head on the Pony is pretty stiff at 36 inch pounds or about three times more than the Irwin. And a performance tool performed better than the Pony at 25 inch pounds, which is still more than twice as much as the Irwin. And the Lincoln Electric performed quite a bit better than the performance tool at 16 inch pounds to move into second place. And the Yost has a pretty large adjustment screw and swivel head. And the Yost moves just as easily as the Lincoln Electric at 16 inch pounds. And the Groves performed even better than the Lincoln Electric and Yost at 14 inch pounds. And the Bessie C clamp performed almost as well as the Lincoln Electric and Yost at 18 inch pounds. And the Kanket performed almost the same as the Bessie at 17 inch pounds. And the Bessie F style swivel head moves very freely at 15 inch pounds and the crescent moves very easily with 500 pounds of load on the swivel head and only 12 inch pounds and the stanley proto performs the same as a crescent at 12 inch pounds and the right tool takes the lead from the irwin at only 8 inch pounds very impressive and the wilton performed the same as the kanka at 17 inch pounds or 9 inch pounds more than the right tool we'll skip the heavy duty wilton since it doesn't have a swivel head so the right tool has the most efficient swivel head at only 8 inch pounds irwin performed well at 11 inch pounds and the crescent and stanley proto 12 inch pounds when i can't get enough clamping force with just using hand force on the handle a cheetah bar really helps. So let's see how much force we can achieve before bending the handles. And the shop tech made it to 812 pounds before the handle became bent. And the Pittsburgh claims to be an industrial grade clamp. And the Pittsburgh briefly made it to 2,163 pounds before losing ground. The frame on the Pittsburgh now has a small bend. And the win has outperformed the Pittsburgh throughout the showdown and it outperformed the Pittsburgh in this test too, making it to 2,568 pounds. The win's frame did experience a small bend. At $14, the Irwin is priced for value. And the Irwin outperformed the win by almost 750 pounds, finally reaching a peak force of 3,321 pounds when the handle bent. The Irwin's frame and adjusting screw are still in good shape. The Harden costs the same amount as the Irwin, but delivers half the performance at 1,537 pounds. The handle is badly bent. Just like the Harden, the Pony struggled on this test with the frame beginning the bend at 1,562 pounds. And the performance tool ran out of performance at 1,416 pounds, and it didn't go down quietly. The handle is now bent. And the Lincoln Electric performed about the same as the Pony at 1,681 pounds when the frame began to twist. And the Yost is pretty heavy duty at just over 5 pounds, and it performed by far the best yet at over 5,300 pounds. The handle is the first to go, but the frame is not bent. For a lightweight clamp that only weighs 3 pounds, the Gross performed well, making it to 3,669 pounds when the frame began to twist. The Bessie is also pretty lightweight at 2.79 pounds, and it also performed well at 3,625 pounds when the frame began to bend. And the Kanka weighs just a little bit more than the Irwin, but it's quite a bit stronger at 4,354 pounds, which is good enough to move into second place behind the Yost. The frame has a small Small bend. And a Bessie F style clamp is rated for 1,330 pounds and it did better than advertised at 1,615. The frame does have a very small bend and the crescent moves into the lead at just over 5,700 pounds. Unfortunately, the threads are now galled and the clamp is very difficult to work with. And the Stanley Proto weighs just over 5 pounds and it performed by far the best yet at almost 9,000 pounds. Just like the Crescent, the threads are now galled and it's very difficult to work with. And the right tool is just under 5 pounds, but it outperformed all the other brands at just over 9,000 pounds when the frame began to twist. And the adjusting screw is still in great shape and the frame is not bent. And the Wilton is the heaviest clamp yet at 5.59 pounds, but the weight advantage isn't enough. Almost 6,400 pounds is about 3,600 pounds less than the right tool. And the Wilton's adjusting screw is now bent. And the heavy-duty Wilton is designed for bridge and shipbuilding, and it delivered more than three times as much force as the second-place finisher at almost 34,000 pounds. Very impressive. No damage to the Wilton. So the heavy-duty Wilton came out on top at 33,880 pounds. Right Tool finished in second at 9,060, and Stanley Proto, 8,980 pounds. If a clamp is already under load, let's see how much holding force each brand can offer before experiencing damage. And the Shop Tech went in two different directions at 980 pounds. And the Pittsburgh performed better than the shop tech making it to 2,581 pounds when the frame broke and the cast metal is pretty brutal and the wind outperformed the pittsburgh on previous tests and the wind outperformed the pittsburgh on this test too finally breaking it almost 4,000 pounds at 3,500 pounds the frame began to bend and twist and the irwin is finished at just under 3,900 pounds the adjusting screw just isn't very refined on the harden but the frame offers pretty good strength at over 5,200 pounds the frame is badly bent but it didn't crack and the pony weighs a little bit less than the harden and it also gave up a little sooner when the frame snapped at 2,000 765 pounds. 
The Performance Tools Adjustment Screw doesn't offer too much clamp load, but the frame does have pretty good strength at almost 4,200 pounds. The frame and the adjustment screw are badly bent. And the Lincoln Electric's frame made it to almost 3,200 pounds when things went from happy to snappy. And the Lincoln Electric is finished. And the Yoast refused to break, making it to almost 10,000 pounds. Instead of bending and holding the bend, the frame returned to the original position once the tension was removed. And it grows as two pounds lighter than the Yoast. And it grows made it to just over 4,000 pounds when it suddenly snapped. I made a couple attempts to reach failure point with the Bessie and it made it to almost 5,000 pounds when the frame experienced a really bad bend. I also made a couple attempts to reach failure point with the Kanka and it made it to almost 6,000 pounds. The frame is now twisted and bent, and a Bessie style F clamp is very light and quick to use. It made it to just over 2,000 pounds when the frame began to twist and bend. And a crescent is made of drop forward steel, and it's extremely durable, finally giving up at just over 10,000 pounds. The frame did experience a bend. The drop forward steel frame on the Stanley Proto is even stronger than the crescents, finally giving up at over 11,000 pounds. The frame did experience a pretty bad bend. And the right tool has outperformed the previous brands throughout the showdown and is back in the lead again at just over 11,300 pounds. The frame did experience a small bend. And the Wilton made it to just over 9,200 pounds, and that's all the frame can handle. After a couple of attempts, the frame and adjusting screw are now bent. And the Wilton C-clamp is rated for 27,500 pounds. And the hydraulic ram is way over its 20-ton rating, and the Wilton is stretching but not bending or breaking. And 50,327 pounds. Very impressive. No damage to the Wilton. So the heavy-duty Wilton came in on top at over 50,000 pounds. Wright Tools and Stanley Proto both finished at over 11,000 pounds, and Crescent at just over 10,000. For many applications, throw capacity can make a huge difference, and the Bessie F clamp has the most capacity at 4.6 inches. The Yost and Wilton are at 4 and a quarter inches, Crescent, Proto, and Wright Tools, 4.2 inches. So which C clamp is the best? If it's all about brute force, the heavy duty Wilton is in a league of its own. In my opinion, it's way too large, heavy, and expensive for most applications. The Stanley Proto and Wright Tool both performed extremely well, but both of them fall within the buy once and cry once category when it comes to price. If it's all about affordability, I really like the Irwin at only $14. It performed extremely well. I definitely don't say it enough. I just want to thank everyone that supports the channel through YouTube memberships as well as Patreon for helping me fund the destruction. I have a lot of fun testing products and it really helps to know the failure point of each tool. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and look forward to next time.